Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 18. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, this is the father-in-law of Moses, he's got many names. Moses' father-in-law heard of all that God had done for, Mo for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. So they come out of Egypt. They come back to where Moses started. Moses has made a great big circle. And when you go back and look, the next is uh, three or four is, God said, this is your sign. You will again worship me in this mountain. That's where the, the bush burned. It, it was not consumed. So, here's Moses' sign. You're right back where you were. And I have told, and you have seen all that I told you was going to happen. So kind of way, what we say, going back to Bethel. Moses had a going back to Bethel. Like Jacob met God, and he said, listen God, this is where you and I begin our journey. And when I come back, I will give you tithes, you know, I worship you, blah, 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 blah. Moses, God sends him out, he comes right back to where he is. And our Bethel today is Calvary. Now, it may or cannot, maybe, uh, listen, our Bethel may not be a physical place anymore. The place where you got saved may not be no more you may not be able to have the ability to go there anymore mine the house is still there the address is still there but i may be talking to some people where they set up a camp a tent and had preaching or maybe a church that's been closed but i can go back to my bethel not a physical place but i can go back spiritually where i met god on the cross and got saved Moses, this is where God met him. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. Oh, we didn't hear about that, do we? Scripture was scripture. Moses gets to Egypt. We don't know why he sends her back. Maybe because, you know, all the hardship. Maybe she's still giving him a hard time. So he says, dear, go home. And her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. Don't tell that to Donald Trump, he'll kick him out. Moses was an illegal alien, and Jethro took him in. And years later, Moses is bringing the Jethro, God of the Bible. Remember the last time Moses said to Jethro, uh, can I go back and see my, my family in Egypt, see how they're doing? And he didn't tell them about how we're gonna, they're going to be redeemed. It's going to be a great controversy between Pharaoh and God. And blah, blah. He didn't tell them that. He said, can I just go check on my people? And Jethro, yeah, go ahead, sure. And he, 
they went out and God met with Zephyr about the child Gershom and the circumcision and in there and the water turns to blood, the frogs and the death and they want water, they want food, they want water. Now here they are. Jethro, let me tell you about what God has done to me and for me and for these people. That's a testimony. It's a testimony to Moses, to his father-in-law. Hey, guess what happened to me? And this is not my land. A lot of Christians got to get to understand this is not our land. And this is where Moses grew up and lived with his wife and having a baby and tending the sheep. And the name of the other was Eliezer. For the God of my father. So, oh, as soon as I said that, the name, I hate that name, goes right in my head. Jochebed and Amram. Amram, we learned from the mouth of Moses speaking to his father in law, was right with God. My father. You know, lost her voice. And he was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So, Eliezer means God is my help. Gershom means stranger. So imagine one day Gershom steps up that and says, Can I ask you a question? Yes, son, what's wrong? Why'd you call me stranger? And he has this great testimony. And then imagine one day Eliezer comes up to Moses, hey, Dad, you know, the cows have been watered, and why do you name me Eliezer? And there's a testimony. And we got to name our children to a testimony of God. My son is named for in my family. We always name the, 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 the son after somebody of the grandparents of the family. Hope you understand what I'm saying. So, of the grandparents of my family, the only godly man I really knew was my grandpa, Henry, my grandpa Fuchs, Henry. I remember we heard that we are going to have a daughter. We sat down with the Bible and we looked at Bible names. So one day when that child comes, you might you name me. You got, if, if you have started your life as a Christian, that child should have a name that testifies to God. Now, you may be named your children before you were saved. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses in the wilderness. So here's Jethro, he's bringing his wife, Sephora, and the two sons. Now, we can only assume that maybe Moses thought, hey, you know what? It's going to get too thick here. I want to protect my wife and children. Well, it does not say. Where he camped at the Mount of God, and that's where the burning bush. And he said unto Moses, I, I thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons with her. Well, that's kind of interesting because Jethro makes the move with the wife and two children. Moses doesn't send anybody up for to go get him. Jethro sees him, he grabs him, all right, here, this is why I'm here. Here's your wife and here's your two children. And there's no story. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. What? Yeah. I, and I don't want to, but that's the last thing we remember. We, we don't know what happened. But it almost looks like, how do you say that? It almost like Jeff was like, here, can you take off now? I, I don't know. Just what we see. And then he did obeisance and kissed him. 
And they asked each other their welfare. And they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake. What were those signs and wonders? Jews require signs. Why did God do that? For Israel's sake. And all the travail that had come upon them by the way. I want food. I want water. Oh, here they come. I want food. I want water. And how the Lord delivered them. Took this tree. We threw it in the water and we could drink it. And we started walking. And there were, you know, 12 waters, I mean, 12 waters of water. 12 palm trees on there. You don't believe what happened at the Red Sea. Never in my life. Can you imagine Moses explaining to Jethro what happened there? I told him to stand still. So God's like, go. I'm like, God. There's a big body of water here. And I lift up my rod like that. And you won't believe what happened. No, no, no. It ain't done. Not only did that water separate Jethro, but that oh, that sea floor became dry. And not only that, Jethro, we were going through that body of water. All of us. All of us Israelites. And not only that, did the Egyptians come in after us. And we thought we were gone. And then God closed that sea on them. That Red Sea story for the, for the Jews was marvelous. Wish you were there. You better even have cell phones back there. We have all the pictures and selfies. Eh. Just kidding. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now you gotta understand, because when we get to the end of this, you're gonna Wow, isn't this great? Jethro is listening to his son in law. He's got to be getting right. He, he, he's, he's, he's listening. He's adhering. He's praising. He's happy. Moses is going somewhere. Jethro, just say this prayer. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. So, Jethro heard the whole story. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Now, does that sound great? You got a lost one, a family member that, that, that is lost, and wouldn't you like to see them acknowledge God is greater than all the gods? Look at verse 27. And Moses let his father in law depart, and he went his way into his own land. He didn't get saved, he didn't get right with God. And Moses is going to give the invitation come with us. Jeff was like, No, I don't want it. I'm going to stay right here. He never got right with God. And Moses had to say, Hey, listen, come with us. No, that's okay. I'll stay. And God told Moses, hey, you got to get going. If you don't want to come, you got to leave him behind. You can't stay there for Jethro. But it sounds good. I know he's greater than all gods, but I just won't believe in him. For in the thing wherein they dwell proudly, the Egyptians, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrificed for God. Priestly functions. And Aaron came in, and Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before the Lord. Now there's no tabernacle. There's no instruction. Jethro is a priest, we read. And he's doing his priestly duties before God. Before Moses, before Aaron, before the elders of Israel. 
And when it comes to following God, I'll stay. I won't go. And doesn't say why. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. Judge not these to be judged, Moses. <laughs> and the people stood by Moses from morning unto evening, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. A 12 hour shift for Moses. Listen, not only is he a pastor of the Israel Church of the Wilderness, Baptist Church. He's also pastor judge of the congregation. He is the closest one to God, and you're supposed to go to your church. Paul says you do not take your cases before the unsaved. It looks wrong. It looks bad. They're sinners. If you're not going to call the pastor to church, and if you find the most simple to one in church that is faithful to God, we'll see that in a minute. And let them do. Listen, you guys somebody loves the Lord and do it right in the church. And two Christians have done wrong. Two Israelites have done wrong. Or they got a question about each other's law. You go to and say, listen, I know you're busy, but me and him, we got a problem. We want to do right. Can we get together and pray? Can you hear his side of the story? Can you hear my side of the story? And can you tell us by the grace of God and the wisdom that who's right and wrong, or maybe there's no right and wrong. So you want to get into the ministry, you got to realize what the ministry beholds. The ministry is just not getting that pulpit. Blah, 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 blah. You got to sit there, you got to listen to people's tears, you got to listen to people's problems, you got to visit them in their sicknesses, you got to run to the post office, you got to go pay the electric bill, you got to go fight the electric bill at the church. That's the ministry. So Moses, 12 hours, he is listening to the people in their gripes and complaints, called cases. Exactly what the courts do today. But we, we've given this nation over unto Satan. We're not giving this nation to God, so we give it to godless, unsaved people who have no authority according to the Bible. And you wonder why you're in the mess you are. So he's listening to these cases. And Moses, by the law, saw that all that he did to the people. He said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone? All right, do you know something there? Let's look at America now. Do you see something there? Now we're going to go to the court system of America. Let me show you. It's a Bible foundation. Who is standing in this court? It's the people. They stood. Verse 13. You go in the courtroom. Who's standing? The plaintiff? And the defendant. Who is sitting? Moses is sitting. Who sits in the courtroom? The judge. Isn't that interesting? You're going to find that our legal system of this country is based upon the King James Bible. Now watch. We're not done. Who said this? He said this. A citizen thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening, twelve hours. All right, I heard this case next. Your Honor, docket number five five three A, Schwitzberg versus Smith. And Your Honor, they got a problem about you know whatever. All right, you go, and then you go. The plaintiff will bring his case. And the defendant will defend himself. Now, isn't this interesting that Moses is, you know, God's a practical joke. Because when we go back to Exodus chapter, chapter 2, let's go to Exodus chapter 2. And we'll go verse 11. This is good. This is all good. And it came to pass in those days that Moses was grown, that he went out 
unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian slave and a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Well, Moses should have gone to court there. He's murdered him. And when he went out on the second day, behold, two men and the Hebrews strove together. And he said unto him that did the wrong, Wherefore smallest thou so? He said, Who has made thee a prince and a judge over us? And here is Moses. God did. Two Hebrews are strolling together for what it be. They punched me. He stole my money. He, he, he killed my cat. Whatever it is. Now Moses is standing here years later. And he's judged. And I get, you, see, the thing is, I've always wondered, Joseph, he's the leader of all Egypt. He's given everybody food, right? I always wonder where Potiphar's wife was during that time. I wonder if she came in with a bag over her head, with a, with a sack. Ever wonder what happened to that Jewish guy that said, who made you? And here's Moses. And I want Moses ever went back to that day, like, hey, hey. And Moses said to his father, well, behold, excuse me, because the people come unto me, acquire of the Lord. Oh, look at that. I mark my Bible. Places I forget. We got one thing going on here that's recorded of the Israelites. Moses, what does God say about between him and me? So what do we, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, let's see, let's take your courtroom. Here's a Bible, put your right hand on the Bible, I swear you tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me asking God. There it is. I am going to swear to God that I'm going to take, tell the truth, and by what I tell the truth, and what I tell the truth, you know someone's going to lie, but by that thing, we're going to seek God, and he's really telling the truth. There it is. We come to the justice system for God's answer between you and me. Now, maybe both parties are correct and right in their story, and there's a misunderstanding. It can happen. Maybe there's a party that's telling the truth, and another party that's not telling the truth. We're seeking God to divide. And then you may have two liars stepping up there before the court. But the inquirer of God. So how did we get rid of God in the justice system? Are you ready for this one? Can I tell you this one? What is the symbol of the justice system today? A blind woman who is a gold, bronze, wood. She's an idol. You have replaced the American justice system from God with an idol on the scale. And by the way, you go check out the Roman mythology. I forget which God that is. So you say, and we're going to see another step away from God in our judicial system where we went wrong. We have taken God out. We're taking the Bible out. So when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes. So what are they called in the books of the law of this country? It's called statutes. Of all the words they could statute. The statutes of God. And his laws. We want God. And this is before Exodus 20. The law has not come yet. And can you imagine this court system when they get together, the plaintiff, the defendant, and the judge, and they get down and they ask God for prayer and say, God, can you help us on this? Why would 
not happen. Hasn't God been speaking to him? Hasn't God been showing him? Wouldn't God step into this assembly right now and say, he's a liar, or you do this? Again, another sign to the Jews that in their courtroom, God's answering them. That would have been a sign. Somehow, somewhere. Moses is not going to rely on all his knowledge and wisdom. He's going to, and he has always, and will, seek God in everything he does. When was the last time a judge in a hard case said, all right, I'm going to call for uh, a recess. I ask the jury to go in the room. I will go into my chambers. I will ask the lawyers of this case to go where they're going to go. I like all of us to get down together and pray on the God for the answer. You're not going to ever hear that. Not in America. And Moses followed and said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away. I don't know. Aren't there judges that work 12 hour shifts and been doing it for years and years and years and years? And this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. For thou art not able to form it thyself alone. I don't know. There's a guy who's not going to follow God. He's going to give this instruction, then he takes off and leaves Moses by himself. So, hearken now to my voice. I will give thee counsel. And I note here is Jehovah is entirely ignored this worldly wise organization. And I'll show you why Jehovah is removed. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee, without God. Be thou for the people to God word. Re replace people with God. Thou mayest bring the causes unto God without God. That's what he's saying. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Colleges where they teach lawyers how to be lawyers. There it is. Yale and those other ones. And shall show them the way wherein they must walk. I don't think colleges teach must today. Just give us your money, we'll give you a diploma, and you can go to a lawyer's side, whatever you do. And the work that they must do, there's one thing Jethro is laying out here. What you must. It's a must. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. All right? Of judges and lawyers of this nation, how many follow these credentials? Number one, they fear God. How many judges and lawyers do you find in this nation that fear God? Very few. Many go the broad way. Few that will fear God. Men of truth. That's even the fewest. Such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. They don't want anything to do with anything of wanting and lusting. People go to college to be lawyers today so they can be rich. And place such over them. To be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. We have circuit courts. We have criminal court. We have traffic court. We have lower courts. We have all kinds of medium courts. For these laws. Into divisions. And that's where America gets that from verse 21. 
There's different districts and divisions of the court system. You will not go to, well, maybe. A traffic ticket court is different from a violation of a property court. Which will be a lot different between a husband and wife court or a children court. And let them judge the people at all seasons. Summer, winter, fall. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, the Supreme Court. If there is a matter that we can't handle, we can't get an answer, we're going to bring it up to the State Appellate Court. We're going to bring it to the State Supreme Court. And if we have to, we'll bring it to the Supreme Court. This is where our court system of America has been founded upon what Jethro has said. But every small matter they shall judge. Will it be traffic? Will it be family? Will it be, uh, you know, he dented my car and he needs to pay for it? Or uh, he didn't pay the rent? Or I didn't get my security back? So shall it be easier for thyself? There's the motive. Let's do it without God. It'd be much easier for you. That's an American word. Easy. Now let's not make it easy. Let's see what God wants to do. And they shall bear the burden with thee. Well, if you're not going to bring it to Moses unless it's a superior case, well, how's it going to be burdened upon Moses unless you bring it to Moses and if if thou shalt do this thing and God commanded thee so to throw God in there where'd you get this vengeance in? well God gave it to me really they haven't, you haven't realized that people will say something that God has did for them, and God's like, looking around heaven like, I did. God, I think it's Jeremiah, their prophets, they said, I said something, and I didn't say nothing. That thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So let's come up with a whole judicial system. And we'll put it all upon the people and not God. And then look at the mess you got today in the judicial system. And our judicial system is anything but God. It is corrupt. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father without prayer. And did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel. You mean the righteous complainers? Pretty soon they're going to be all dancing naked running the calf. Those are the men. And notice they're never named. And they're never mentioned. And God never put a seal of approval on this. Now when he said from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., it didn't say he was do always constantly doing it. There may have been people tapped him on the shoulder and said, Moses, yes, we got this case. All right, I'll beat you in 10, 10 hour glass of the sun going down and two minutes over there. Okay. I don't think Moses is completely burdened every single minute at this moment. I don't know. But let's make it easy. Easy believism. Easy will destroy you. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people. Oh yeah, give them an ego trip. 
And rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of the Again, I said that's your circuit court, that's your traffic court, that's your family court, and, and, you know, court, 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 court. And they judge the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, they're just bringing court. Now, can I say something that's really, really interesting here? Verse 26, you will make a note. And I've gotten this out of two or three reliable sources. And I don't think they would lie. I'm not going to call them liars. But they, I have never, but they have been people who visit the United States Supreme Court building. Okay? That's where you take the hardest cases of the land and you bring them before those judges. And they have told me, the hard cases you bring up to Moses, verse 26, we we'll make this note, that above the chief seat of the chief, chief, I'm trying to speak, I have a hard time, excuse me, the chief justice of this nation, of the Supreme Court of this country in Washington, D.C., above his seat is a painting of Moses carrying the Ten Commandments. I've been told by three people. So when you bring that great big case to the court of your county, and you got to bring it to the court of your state, and yet you you cannot get an answer. You don't like the answer. You bring it to the United States Supreme Court in Washington D.C. By the way, you can't preach on the streets of the Washington Supreme Court building, I have also been told by street preachers. It's illegal. We had U.S. Marshals force us off a state court building. And what we're talking about is the Bible, and we're talking about the court, but you can't bring the Bible. You bring your case to the United States Supreme Court, and that Chief Justice sits in his seat, you see 26, he looks up and you'll see Moses carrying the law. The system that we call, we call court of the United States of America, was it a Christian nation? According to the Bible, according to how they set it up. Now Washington DC may look like Rome, But some of our ways have come out of the Bible. Brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judge themselves. Paragraph. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. We're going we're gonna to see a little bit later. He's going to say, well, come with us. And then, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Sorry. That's a lot less a little bit further, but we'll see. He, he will he will give the invitation to Jethro, and Jethro will say, no, I don't want it. 